And uh, real quick, let me introduce you to a few people that are here tonight. Uh, we have Mayor Harry Pruitt from Neptune Beach. I want to introduce Tamara because she's the librarian for the Beaches Branch Library, and she's she's always helping us out here, and we really appreciate it. So we want to And then we have a, a commissioner-elect for Atlantic Beach, Jimmy Hill. And uh, let's see, do we have anybody else I need to recognize? Bob Sikip, um, who is the branch manager. Is the oh, okay, Bob. Bob is the branch manager. I'm the region manager for this area. Okay. And this is one of my four branches. Always glad to be here. Okay, great. Well, thank you. And then Janelle Wilson, who's city councilwoman for Jacksonville Beach. She just walked in. And then real quickly, I want to introduce our board members tonight because uh, on our agenda, uh, we are, I want to let everybody know that we um, will be taking nominations in November for board positions because we have, if you look on the agenda, I hope everybody got an agenda tonight because there's information on here we hope you'll take home with um, We do have the vice president's <coughs> position, the secretary position, and then the director position that will be up for election in December. And so we do have um, board member applications at the member table back there. If you are interested in serving on the board, we would love to have your application. Uh, but let me introduce you to the board members that we, to our current board members. We have Ed Dahl, who is our current vice president. We have Eileen Krimsky, who is our membership director. And Kate Rowan. What's your new name? John Mary. And she's our secretary. And then we have Georgette Dumont, and she's our board of directors. Yeah. <laughs> and then so Lance Bacher. And then Beth Kilgore is our treasurer. So if you have any questions, feel free to talk to any of our board members tonight. We'd love to answer any questions you may have. Uh, we are always welcome. We welcome new faces on the board because that means new ideas and we love that. So anyway, um, a few other announcements I want to make. Um, we have Fairy Fest coming up on Saturday, October 12th, and we do need some volunteers. We've got a volunteer sheet um, over at the table where Eileen is. If you can volunteer a few hours, we, I think we need volunteers for the three to, three to five shift because um, we did pick up some volunteers just a little while ago. So it, it's a lot of fun because you get to sit and listen to the music and watch the people go by, but you also get to talk to people about Beaches Watch and hand out information about Beaches Watch and help us get the word out about our organization. Also, there's a new app for the Jack Sperry, and there's links on here. You can go check it out. I tried to download it, but apparently my smartphone is not very <coughs> smart um, because it said I didn't have enough space so in, in my phone to be able to download the app. So anyway, but this is supposed to be a great app. It was, oh, okay, so Linda has it. So it, um, it's supposed to tell you where the ferry is, um, help you kind of stay you know, in touch if you're trying to catch it. Oh, Ed's got it too. Um, oh, and so does Harriet. So any of those people can show it to you if you're interested. Um, also, we want to let you know, as of October 1st, we've opened up early bird renewal and registration for membership for Beaches Watch. Um, and you can, if you go ahead and renew your membership in October or from now on, you know, from now until the end of the year, then you're good for 2014. So um, we just like to encourage you. We've got membership forms um, on both tables. If you'd like to renew your membership, we would certainly appreciate it. Um, it goes to support the things that we're doing, the candidate forums, um, these meetings that, that we do, the um, give back donation that we do every year, as well as the the uh, Friend of the Beaches Award, and um, our, our e-newsletter helps us pay for constant contact because it's not free, and um, our website posting and paying for our website. So anyway, hopefully you guys will uh, renew your membership, or if you haven't joined, we'd appreciate you joining. 
Um, then also we are opening nominations for the Give Back donation. And just to let you know real quickly what that is, uh, every year we give a donation to a local nonprofit, and it's a nonprofit that's enriching the quality of life <coughs> of beaches for beaches residents. So um, I know there's a lot of worthy organizations out there, and we love to be able to support the organizations that are helping our beaches residents and our beaches communities. So um, we do have the nominations open. You can email us the nomination, why you think the organization is deserving and what they do. And that's all that information and info at beacheswatch.com is where you can email it to. And then we will, the board will be selecting a recipient and we will be awarding uh, the donation in December. So uh, if you know a worthy organization, please share it with us. And then in November, our meeting is going to be on the 6th, and it will be here, and we will have Scott Dudley, who's with the Florida League of Cities, and he's going to be talking about the issues uh, that the Florida League of Cities is going to be pushing in the 2014 legislative session that are issues that are important to municipalities. And I, a lot of you may have been at the meeting where the city manager spoke about the upcoming budgets for our municipalities and there's a lot of things at the state level that really affect our municipalities and some things that probably need to be changed and we need to understand what are those things so that we can talk to our elected officials and encourage them to support that legislation or not support the legislation whatever it may be so um, scott dudley is going to be coming and talking to us and this is a great opportunity for us to get behind some things that are going to be happening in Tallahassee and really understand it and help get some change at the state level that will affect us locally. So anyway, without any further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our guest speaker tonight. And we have Guy Anderson who is um, going to talk to us about Save Jack's Libraries as well. And he's also a, a member of the Library Board of Trustees. But I also want to welcome Bill Brenton too, who's part of this effort. And so Bill, you, uh, Bill is, I have to just say, Bill is, um, Crazy. has been a mentor. <laughs> Maybe he was a mentor for Beaches Watch back in 2004 when we first started our hype referendum in Jacksonville Beach because Bill Brenton is an attorney in Jacksonville and he led, he has had led several uh, successful citizen initiated referendums. And um, this is a, a very similar effort. So they've got the best, they've got the best working on this, which is great. Um, and anyway, so without Bill's uh, guidance and the information he shared with us, I mean, he really helped give us, get us uh, running on, on the referendum we did for Jack's Beach. So it, if you guys, would both of you like to come up or oh, yeah. how would you like to do this? He's right? gonna point his finger at me. Okay. That's a tough question. And I'm going to call on Sybil to explain <laughs> some of these things. Oh, no. you, you, your best asset at the beach, among many best assets, is Sybil Onsbrock. Yay. Yeah. Okay, so Guy Anderson and Bill Brent and I let you guys have the floor. Well, I'm Guy Anderson. That's Bill Brent. He's the younger guy. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to say thank you very much for the invitation to come. I, I, as, uh, as Billy said, I, I've got two hats. Uh, Bill uh, got me ripped into working on uh, Save Jack's Libraries uh, on this whole process. And in the meantime, I also got myself involved with the uh, Board of uh, Trustees for the library. So I've got two hats. So I'd like to just say thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, and I'd like to just get you an up to date on what's going on. Everything is not, everything is cool for right now. But everything is not happy for what's going to happen in the future, and uh, particularly for the library situation. So I'd like to bring you up to date on what's going on at this point. Uh, to give you a history, last year the mayor came to the uh, board library uh, group and said, uh, I need a reduction of uh, $2.4 million out of your budget. Now that's the seventh year of budget cuts for the library system here in Jacksonville. So the year before had been a very drastic one where the library system lost 67 members of the staff, uh, this type of thing. 
we close the library, the board of trustees had to close the library as well most Mondays. I mean, everybody, you know, nobody was happy with that. But what really happened is when all the dust settled, uh, and also led by your, you know, uh, Bill Gelfer, who you're representing, uh, you know, every, anytime you guys see him, I just like to say, like, you offer to buy him a cup of coffee and whatever else he wants, because he does a great job. And he did a great job at the library. But what the whole net of it is, our reduction in budget for this year is about $175,000. And that's out of the 2.3 uh, reduction. And that is basically mostly going to come out of materials. So if you see your favorite magazine missing, or the book you want, or an e-book you want, part of that is $173,000. Uh, and I think everybody feels pretty good about that. So a lot of people who worked on at the board, the, uh, the uh, city commission, uh, the county uh, the council, did a great job of getting it done. Uh, also, uh, Greg Anderson and Bill Bishop and all those people really stood up, and John, Chris, and Benny also at the library, and that's the net on it. The budget this year is going to be $33 million for the, and you have to understand, if you try to do the math and what that all works out to, is the difference is there is a lot of indirect expenses that get involved through the consolidated government and this type of thing. So it doesn't, that is not $33 million of direct money. There is a lot of, some of that's over here the city of But the good part, is all the branches are open. All, all the people will be served. The main li library will be open on Saturday. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Bishop and this guy's got that all put back together again. So the library system is not necessarily super, but it's intact. And it's part of what you people voted for in the Heather Jacksonville plan when you voted for two and a half billion dollars to spend. So that is the intent. Uh, Civil Ansbacher and I have both had the opportunity to serve on the Board of Trustees, the library. The board is working very, very hard to make sure that the services are there and are very are very strong for the citizens. And that involves everybody from borrowing a book. It involves everybody from getting on the computers to find a job. It involves People getting information on the Obamacare health plan for this year. It involves making sure that the kids have got an activity that goes on. It's just all those things that have to go on in the, in the library system. It's done very, very well. And I want to say that the people you see here from the library, they all work extremely hard and they're, they're really doing a great job for you. Uh, why did these uh, budgets get changed? Uh, thank God everybody heard, every city council member heard from the citizens when there was a budget cut. Most of the council members I had talked to said <coughs> that they couldn't get through all the emails that were coming in and saying what the heck is going on. The support from the Times Union and the local papers who made sure that the people, the citizens knew what was going on. And we have to thank them and you know our little page and everybody else for putting out the cry that this is not the right thing to do. And the friends of the library group, Sublon uh, if I were ever to have a revolution in the United States, we need to get a new government, we need to get a new army to start the revolution, I get civil to help you work. She does a great job. So that's what it is. Uh, okay. The near term is taken care of, okay? 2015, there will be another budget battle, okay? And the budget is gonna have to go to war again. But the long-term solution to this is basically an independent taxing jurisdiction. What that really means is to get dedicated funding for the library system so it does not become part of the political Variety that happens every year. Okay, there's not a whole lot you can do with it in the current, time. but what really gets restricted is the library system itself gets funding every year. It's been cut every year for the last seven years. 
And what it really does is long-term planning gets to be tough. To put a long-term plan on what you need to do with the library system is to have a fully functioning automated book return system and accounting system. Can't get done because it's a multi-year process. Those are the type of things that can be done. So what really happens? I'll let you know that your library system does have a long-term strategic plan. About three years ago, the library board brought in consultants. It was state funded. It was not out of your, it was not out of the local money, and they put together a capacity plan. And that plan called, and they brought in outside consultants. They didn't do it with local people. They did people who are particularly in the, uh, adept at working with the library systems. They put that together, and it is, if you need to look at it, it's online under Jack's Library. It's an 800 and some odd page document. And the executive summary is 54 pages. I've never understood why the executive summary is 54 pages, but that's what it is. <laughs> but that's how it was done, and it was before my time. Um, in 2012, JCCI was uh, the library, the Friends of the Library, and Save Jack's Libraries, and the foundation went to JCCI and said, we'd like to have a study done to help us understand what has to be done for the long-term plan. Uh, 75 to 90 people participated in that study. Uh, it was over about a 12 or 14 week period. Uh, Bill Britton was a uh, part of the driving force behind it. And that was funded by the Friends of the Library. That's JCCI study. You can get a copy of it at JCCI. And what that did is we looked at that study group that looked at six or eight different uh, library systems <coughs> around the country. Louisville, Kentucky, Los Angeles, um, Alachua County, Hillsborough, <coughs> West Palm Beach, Miami-Dade, Columbus, and I forget who else we looked at. So we looked and say, what is the best structure and what has been successful and what has failed? Okay, and why have they, have they not gone through? So basically the idea was that we had to have some type of dedicated funding. And there are different formats to that, but the one that the, was recommended by the people who worked on the JCCI study was to build an independent taxing jurisdiction. And what that really means to you is this. Independent taxing jurisdiction is say that on your tax bill, there would be a line village line and we say this much money goes strictly to the library. It doesn't go to sewers, it doesn't go to public health, the public health, it doesn't go to anything else. That money is dedicated strictly to the library system. And nobody can touch it. Now to get that independent tax and jurisdiction, uh, there is we have to change or make an amendment to the Jacksonville Charter, which the people of Jacksonville, the Consolidated Charter, which people of Jacksonville voted on in 1967, I think it was, <coughs> is before my day. Okay. Um, and that has to be done. Mr. Bill Britton found a way to do that. There is a provision down in sections such and such, such and such, and such and such, called the straw ballot. There are probably only 12 people in the country who know about that section, section, section. Bill Clinton <coughs> happens to be one, and Jim, Jim Reinerman happens to be the other. But the idea was that what we could do is build a voter referendum to change the charter, to amend the charter. And that's what this thing is all about. So in order to get the straw ballot, which would be a non-binding referendum, non-binding question, put on a future ballot, we had to get a petition together. Um, we need, in order to get that petition on a future ballot, we need 25,997 signed, approved petitions by the Supervisor of Elections. I can say to this day that project has been going on. Civil Office has been collecting them. I'm not quite sure if anybody 
in Jack's speech, I has not had the opportunity to meet Sybil on this petition drive because I've seen the results of how many have come in. I, I'd like to see a show of hands. Has anyone not signed a library petition that's being approached by Sybil? <laughs> <laughs> we can cure that problem. Yeah, that petition, <laughs> I, I just decided. We've got this project going on last year. And last summer, we get this email, a bunch of us on the team, who Sybil says, I had a knock at the door. Now, we have these great big A-frames when we set up the shop. You maybe have seen this thing where we set up a table. And we put these Save Our Library signs on it. Sybil was having an event at her house, hosting some people for the 4th of July. But she needed to make sure that there would be a problem in the driveway. So she takes the A-frame that has Save Our Library signed here and puts it out in her driveway so that her guests have gotten a way to drive in. She's having entertained the folks. She gets a knock on the door, and there are some young people out there saying, we'll sign. <laughs> <laughs> so Sybil sets up shop on the 4th of July in her driveway and collects petitions. Now that's dedication to the, to the cause, folks. When I heard that, I just, I, I just got it. And so this is the numbers that we have today. We've got about 19,000, we've got over 19,000 of them approved. It's, and it's, the campaign is still going on. We need the, another 6,000 done. And that's, we'd like to get more than that, okay? And basically, that's where we are. We have about 5,500 of them there, it's somewhere in the process, okay? We get a yield uh, because some get thrown out and people sign it. And some people have been very, uh, Judicious about it, and they have signed four and five of them. So <laughs> that doesn't count. So we try to get that done. But we're working very hard, and I have a personal target date of December 31st. Because there's some other things I like to do with my grandkids in November, December. And they, if we don't get to that number, I'm not going to get that done with the grandkids. So please help me. <laughs> hey, God. Yes. I, we know from experience that in order to get petition signatures certified, you have to pay. Yes. So how are you guys paying for this? I can get into the slide for that. Oh, okay. Because, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm kind of like helping yeah, that, out here. <laughs> that's that's our, our uh, bill and I are here today. Uh, yeah, it, it, costs, it costs 10 cents per petition submitted. So we probably written checks for $2,500 at this point. Something of that nature. Um, more, more. Maybe more, more than that. Yeah. So, and uh, <coughs> Bill's been working on get and, and Bill, and make sure we have it. Okay. Uh, so that's where we are at this point. And what is the meaning of the, uh, the uh, it, uh, independent tax and jurisdiction? The way it is proposed, and we hope that it would work, is there be a library commission set up? It's written in this four page document back here. If you get insomnia, take one of them, read it tonight. And Bill wrote it, and uh, Bill and Bill Shy wrote it, so it's got it's, you know that it's got to be good, but it is a little dry, folks. <laughs> but what would be done is there would be a five member board put together, it would be the mayor three members of city council, and the head of the school board. And those five people, their major duty would be to overview things, but the major thing would be to set the military. Okay. And that would, they would set the military and say, this is how much money <coughs> should be collected for the library. The library We had a group of uh, a fairly diverse group to sit down and, and look at how we would do the library, independent library district in Duval County, looking very closely at Alachua County and Orange County. And when the question came up is who's going to set the village rate and whether you have a cap, there was general consensus there should be a cap. You don't want to like propose something and not have a cap. 
We were very careful about that. We didn't want to set the cap too low. We didn't want to set the cap too high. We wanted to be, have a, a number that would work. So we think we came up with a number that would work. There was some debate about, about this five. You know, should it be nine people, five people, three people? Who's going to set the millage? And should they be appointed as opposed to coming from and holding an elected position? And there was, there was some thought that we really shouldn't have elected officials doing this. It should be people that are appointed that you know, will act independently of politics. But the majority of the thought was no, you can't have a group set in millage that are not elected officials. And so we looked very carefully, especially at Alachua County uh, in Orange County. Uh, they're elected officials, and you can't ignore the mayor. Whoever the mayor is, that person is an important person in Duval County, elected countywide. You can't ignore the city council, which is a countywide council, even though you know, we have the um, municipalities of the beaches and Gulf Ball. But the thought is, anyone that's going to step forward from the city council that wants to be involved in libraries are probably better than just rolling the dice and getting three at random. And then, uh, just like uh, other jurisdictions, schools are very important in the whole education process. So having an elected uh, school board, whoever the ch uh, chairman or chairwoman is of the school board, as an elected official is also sitting down with one of those five people. And I don't expect every year that the five people that would set the millage are all going to be in agreement, but I do believe, given what their mission is, that three out of five, maybe four out of five, will do the right thing vis-a-vis -vis the village for the libraries. And I'll come back and chime in later, but I just wanted to, to chime in on, on that because it was a very critical, I thought, important point that we uh, be really thoughtful about this. And this process took about two months of vetting something that went through 25 or 26 changes we had bond lawyers involved, we had former uh, chairs of the, of the library board involved, we had former, we had lots of people that were involved in, in drafting this language because I sat down and, and scratched something out like I did from time to time on initiatives and referendum, but then I needed help and it needed to be a, a representative group that everybody brought something to the table and had their own idea, so God knows. Thanks, Bill. Uh, and what you would, the proposal would be to keep the current uh, board of trustees and have them overseeing the operation of the uh, of the library. The library would uh, be able to uh, contract and set their own, own systems together. The library is unique in that when you're talking about there are a lot of basic requirements. It's got 375, 400 employees. It's these type of things. It's got general. Uh, accounts payable, it has to run down the ledger. All those things are very easily supported by the city IT department. But the system, as you know, has a lot of independent, has a lot of very specialized needs. You know, the cataloging systems and all the systems that keep track of all the, and the, the, the search systems and, the, and all the pieces that you have out here to available to you. There's nobody else in the city that has anything like it. Okay, the sheriff's office has got different requirements than the library. So what we'd be allowed to do with the if, with this type of an environment and separation of the library, they would be able to race zero in on what they need and be able to get efficiencies on operation. That's the intention of it. The intention is not to do, to divorce itself from the rest of the city. It's just basically give it enough flexibility that it has to have to do long-term planning on what has to be done. Okay. An example may be the capacity plan says we want to reconfigure some of the libraries. There are libraries in the inner core, in the urban core, which the facilities are somewhat limited. Would we be better off with a new better facility would be do better with a beaches library facility in the urban core where everybody can get to it. You know, what do we have to do with communications? We have certain libraries that are restricted 
is that how they get their access is to the to the internet. <coughs> this is a major function of the library to get people available on the internet. So we can't wait in the long term. We have to figure something out to do that, and that's what this will allow the system to do. Um, the board of library trustees at the current time will stay the same under the proposal. The people of the uh, members are nominated by the mayor and confirmed by the council. So they're elected officials, the bill is saying, elected officials are still controlling things, okay, are still influential in, in the whole operation of the But what we really do is get dedicated funding, we get some long term plans in place to get them operational, and we have some new plans for the library. Okay. Bill, do you want to do the begging? We don't need to do the begging. I'll do our first time of the day. As you know, we do have certain expenses to get this petition done and to get the next phase of the this whole thing. Uh, and we've had some very, very good support up until this time. But if anybody would like to uh, support this for the financial donation, you can go to savejackslibraries.com and there's methodology to send a $10 check or a $10,000 check or on um, You don't need to make it help. It would help. It would help. I would. Yeah. It would help. It would help. But if anybody is, can see the way to do that, uh, everybody would appreciate it at this point. Okay, because the first phase of this is still, still needs some funding. Um, still needs some funding to get everything all done. Okay. Bill, you have more comments? Um, just a few. Um, you mentioned the charter. We, I've been involved uh, in three uh, charter amendments. Uh, first one in 87, and then another one a few years on uh, Bill Wills. I spent the last four and a half hours in the workshop. Long story, but sometimes it's, it's never over when somebody on the other side wants to uh, undo everything. So, so surprising to hear tonight mm -hmm. talking about the library petition after leaving the city council chambers dealing with undoing the charter and the billboards bill. Term limits uh, for city council members and uh, which is a recommendation of another JCCF study and then the tree referendum in uh, 2000. Um, this is not te technically it's not an amendment of the charter, it's, it's a straw ballot. And the straw ballot option for people to gauge, you know, how people you know think about a particular issue has never, ever been utilized in Duval County. Never, ever. It got added to the charter as a as a kind of a safety valve for public sentiment on an issue when they can't do something in any, in any other way. And it was a kind of an outgrowth of the uh, failed garbage tax uh, referendum that Betty Holstenberg put together and it failed on all sorts of for all sorts of reasons that it couldn't be done. But then the question was, well, we don't want to disappoint people by basically denying them the right to speak about something and what Betty Holstenberg was trying to do, you couldn't do. So that you know, she could have done it as a straw ballot question, but that wasn't available. So the charter was changed for Duval County to allow the concept of a straw ballot. What we learned uh, from the JCCI study was that you know, Alachua County and Orange County did not put that issue on the ballot for an independent library district in their counties. They can't. They're prohibited by law from doing that. The Florida legislature, the Florida legislature has to put the issue on the ballot and then it has to be approved by the voters. So if, you're, if you follow politics with our legislature and whoever is holding the office of, of government, putting a proposal on the ballot in Duval County for a library tax, they're not going to do that, are they? You might think that they would just do that on the run one, one session saying, I think we'll put a library, we'll put a library, uh, independent library taxing district on the ballot in Duval County. They're not going to do that. But I believe, and now I really believe it because I've seen what's happened politically, if you have a library straw ballot question on the ballot saying we 
the voters of New York County would like you to put this issue on our ballot so we could have the same opportunity to choose that you, the Florida legislature, gave Alachua County voters, that you gave Orange County voters. What are we, chopped liver? Why can't we have the same choice that these other counties have? As we found out through the library uh, study, that the best run libraries in the state of Florida, among them, but for like a, at a county level, is Orange County and Alachua County. An independent library district is kind of like the, the coming thing. It really it, it's much more efficient. You don't have to, you know, you can roll money over from year to year. You can do long-term planning. You don't have to depend upon public works to fix a leaky a building or the IT department to do, fix the computers that are half of them are broken at Brentwood. You have it self-contained. So, in thinking this through politically, Sandy, you know, you know how this works. If there's a great outpouring of voter support to say, yes, we would like this issue on a future ballot, then I think the legislature, the governor, everybody involved uh, with the delegation will say, yes, let's get this on the ballot and see what people think. If people think it's a bad idea, then it won't go forward. If people think it's a good idea, then we'll have the real choice because the legislature will put it on the ballot. What might happen, what might happen, is there would be a straw ballot on the ballot in August of next year. Right at the time we're getting ready to have that food fight again about closing libraries and reducing material cost and shutting down, you know, losing hours. And maybe, just maybe, the legislature this next session in the spring of 2014 would say, you know, we don't want to wait. We don't think Duval should have to wait another two or three years to have the, the real question on the ballot after we find out what happens in August and wait another year and there's not another you know ballot going on for another year after that. Why don't we say, look, we will put this on the ballot for real in November of 2014 if in August of 2014 the voters of Duval County said, yes, we want to have this issue on the ballot. So be conditioned upon voter approval in August. That's kind of my thinking right now. Um, but we'll have to you can talk to the delegation, talk to uh, all the political leadership and say, do you think this is a good idea? Because if the voters vote in, in August in overwhelming numbers that they want this issue on the ballot for real, they're going to be very disappointed to find out, well, we can't put it on the ballot in 2014 because there's not a 180 day, you know, there's not a window of opportunity for the legislature to act because the legislature has to do it in 2015. But then one of the elect next elections, and it, it just gets pushed down the road. In the meantime, what's happening with the library system? What's happening with the library system is the same thing that's been happening for the last seven years. Slice, 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 slice. And that's why, you know, there's an issue of library sustainability. It's why JCCI had to study. I, uh, I was pulled in kicking and screaming to the JCCI study by Harry Reagan, who said, Bill, you have to participate. He said, Harry, I don't have time because of this, this, and this. And Harry said, no, you need to participate. So I guy was brought in there kicking and screaming. But I did serve on the library capacity plan study from several years before that. Um, we have the citizens of Duval County uh, want education. They want a first class library system. They're willing to um, collect petitions, go to set out polling places. I mean, I've never seen in my life of doing initiatives and having done three of them, I've never seen such so the support at such a level. I mean there sometimes there were like like 19 out of 20 people were signing petitions. It's more popular than the billboard referendum, it's more popular than the term limits, and it's more popular than the tree referendum which passed with like 75% of the vote in every, you know, with an average of 75% of the vote. I think the pages was like 85%. <coughs> People love libraries. And uh, so we have a good board of library trustees. We've got in civil. We have good leadership within the library staff, the professionals. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I was brought here also against my will in 1939 when I was six years old. By my, my parents, 
You may not know this history about me. I used to live in Kansas City, Missouri. And this is back in the days when the city of Jacksonville would do a nationwide search and actually hire somebody that's not their neighbor. We would hire somebody from another, another state to come to Jacksonville to be, in the case of my father, the library director of the Jacksonville Public Library System in 1959. And the chairman of the board at that time was Cecil Bailey at the Rogers Towers Bailey Jones and Gay Firm. Where am I today? I'm at Rogers Towers. So it's a small world. And so I sat around and watched the, uh, the formation of consolidation. I would hear the stories at the dinner table every night about corruption and, and the inefficiencies. And, and uh, uh, Dad was protected when we, when we did consolidation because in that charter that the people voted on in August 8th of 1967, there was a provision in the charter that laid out the, qual the qualifications for the library director. It was in the chart in 1967, and the degrees you had to have, because the library, the, the powers that be back then, wanted to make darn sure that you're not going to have some crony running the library system that's a friend of the future mayor, but you actually have a professional librarian. So I learned a little bit about politics uh, early, early on. So I've always cared a lot about libraries. I've, I've come to the rescue a couple times, or so, so to speak, uh, when there's been efforts within the city to just make another city department. I think Bill Shaw and I were both about, I mean, basically, so we're going to go create a petition campaign tomorrow if you, this is when the previous mayor, in the first few months in office, had the idea about making the libraries another city department, eliminate the uh, end of the library board of trustees and just make it a city department that reports directly and politically, which would be a bad thing. So uh, from time to time, I've gotten involved. When I saw the, the, the state of the libraries a couple of years ago, what was happening, something something needs to give. Something we need to do things better. And it's and it's really a question of you've know, got to be smart. You've got to do things better. And this is a it's not the perfect solution. I've debated with Andy uh, Johnson a couple of times. He thinks we're just going to have the same bunch of no good bums, you know, running things that are running things now. I told Andy, no, I really I'm, I'm optimistic. I think this is going to uh, set the libraries on the path for the next couple of decades, we're going to have a much better library system. We're going to have people that are in responsible positions that really care about libraries. So thanks for letting me uh, extend guys' remarks. Um, and it's great to be at the beach. Um, I'm always kind of you know, worried sometimes that I'm from the other side of the ditch and I might not be welcomed at the beach. <laughs>
and then Billy Belford, Bill Bishop, and John Preston. He had three of the best council members who could possibly have. And I would say with those three, nothing was going to go wrong because three votes control out of the five. Yeah, but down the road is all you have. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, this, and this is the conversation I've had with Andy. I think down the road you're going to see the same thing. You're not going to have volunteers from the council to serve on the library board that sets the middle of because they really care about libraries. Unless there's somebody out there that really wants to be damaged the libraries. The board folks were alive today and on the city council, you might want to say, I want to clear out all those in the dirty books in the libraries. And, you know, but he, you know, you're, you're going to get people that really care, I think. And so that's, uh, this is my best effort, um, Harriet, to try to have something to, you know, to, to try to work. Well, we appreciate what you're doing, but it's also said you work so hard about the billboards, and now they're trying to overturn it. It's, it's, it's the harder you work. Well, I've been pretty, we've got about 1,200 billboards gone, and I'm still trying to, uh, um, there are a lot of suits down there that were actually being paid money as, as this suit. Uh, it's a great cause, and I think all of us are in support of libraries. I am definitely in support of libraries. But did you ever get any, give any thought to other sources of funding? Because now property tax uh, people, people that own property, are have the burden of the libraries in this situation. Everybody uses the libraries, but the taxpayer, I mean, property owners are the ones that would be paid. The money. I have a problem with that being a relative. Well, if I, if I have 10 pennies in my pocket, and right now it's going to the city, and then one penny of that is going to libraries for the city through the inefficiencies that we know exist, it would be better to take most of the penny and put it in a library district where, it, where it's not going to be rated by other city departments. It's going to only go for libraries. and going to be rolled over from year to year, long-term planning. Um, you know, not, not, I mean, what's happening right now is Libraries go to the church, but the city departments. Libraries can't do anything about it. So it's not on top of, it's in replacing money that would otherwise be going to the general fund, be going to the library district. And you may get, just like you've had this year, we've had an adjustment in the village based upon the needs, and the city council said we can't possibly take the mayor's budget because there are too many needs that we're going to go unmet, so we're going to adjust the village. I, want, I, mean, I think it's good to take the library out of all that food fight. And this is what has worked. I mean, it's worked in Alachua and Orange County, and they're not, they've not been trying to undo what they did for libraries. Okay, and if you do this, if you do this with the libraries, what's going to prevent other special interest groups from wanting to do the same thing? Because libraries are. Because you're going to have the ferry, and you're going to have various other entities that are going to want to do the same thing. Say, this is my money, I'm going to line out of. Uh, library districts are, are is it, is true, is, library districts are being, are around the country, they've existed for years, it's a trend line, and so you're not going to be balkanizing everything, but libraries have a, have a record of being independent and having an independent district. So again, we vote against it, but if you vote against it, then what, you know, what, there you be, you know, possibly, maybe someone's going to come up with a better, with a better gospel. This is the best point. But there's another question on that, another point that is that people say, well, why not have charge for library cards and things like that? You can't do that in the state of Florida. And you cannot get federal funding if you do that. Public libraries have to be open free of charge. That's part of the Constitution. So we cannot have, we can't charge a, a membership fee. But you've been charging property owners. But that's great, because we are, we're not taxed that much. We are one of the most undertaxed right. places in America. Well, that's why Florida is the best place. That's where we get our funding money. Go ahead, Julie. Oh, just, I just wanted to ask, when, um, <coughs> if the library, for whatever reason, currently has money left over in any of their budget lines, where does that money go? Back to the general fund for Jacksonville? Right. And the doesn't library see doesn't see it again. Civil, and the idea I do, civil can be, civil's got the numbers, mm -hmm. okay? And if there's 32 cents left, if there was 32 cents left last Monday afternoon, it was, you know, it went back. But no, the, so, but, so, 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 so the money right now, it was scraping for every other So the money would roll over in this Right, right. Okay. And, and if we get the other questions, I want to bring up one thing about the, uh, the 
Library Foundation, uh, and, and I've never served on the board of the Library Foundation, <coughs> but I've heard these discussions from the people like Howard Cooper and others who've served on the Library Foundation board. They have decided they are not going to give money to the libraries if that money is simply like for materials. What if they gave $100,000 for materials? Maybe they will. The way they look at it, oh, that's just means the city council, the next budget is going to cut the library no, the So they are, right now, we are not getting gifts and funds for the libraries because the perception is by people that have, that have the generosity to give, that all it's going to do is go into the general fund. The city council, as opposed to a, a dedicated library system board, is not going to, you know, right. do that. Right, that makes sense. Sir? I'm understanding the, you know, Absolutely a fan of the library, but is there any contingency for a reduction of a similar amount from the general fund, or are we just going to raise our taxes? It, 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 it's, it's not. It doesn't go back in the other direction, because you can't just stack them on top of them. Yeah, it, it, and, and out of concern for it passing and the library is being funded, that's the number one issue I see. Is you've got to at least make people believe that, that, that it's not going to still be taxed what they were taxed, and then another that. Well, every year, Year after year, the city comes up with a budget, and there's so much for libraries. And the amount for libraries isn't only the drug cost, but also all these other departments say, Oh, this is what I provide the library. So it's the library's budget, it's not really the library's budget, right. it's other people's budgets. It's really the library. So how do we make that point that well, the, because the upon when, when the mayor comes up with a budget, the first year this is in place, and they, in the previous year there was like 33 million or 30 million or 35 million in the library budget. Well, you can't, you can't say we need $35 million for the library budget because that budget is taken care of in this other way. So it'll be very transparent that if you're trying to then raise additional money, then you're going to have a whole bunch of other departments that are all going up. And that's, that ain't going to fly with the, with the council members I know and any council members I've ever seen before. They will be on that like, like that. That's, that's the political reality. But there's no way other, there's no other way to, to do it. What's the plan to sell that? I guess is my real question. That's what the that's what the real question is going to be. Yeah. Well, the way I would, the way I would approach it is to kind of replicate the JCCI study and point to Orange County and point to Alachua County and see how their system compares with ours and why their systems are so much superior to ours and all the benefits that can flow the the efficiencies that would come about from not being some of the horror stories from about the IT department overcharging hypothetically public works not being able to fix things and all this stuff that you know, people that are in the library science field, the library administration field know that we, we wouldn't have that problem. We could, you know. Is there a precedent set where the, some other entity has come along and there was a shown reduction? Or in other words, can we show the citizens as we push this agenda forward if, if, if it goes that direction? You know, I, I have not gone back to the last one and and asked them to show me the numbers from the years of that conversion, but that would certainly be something we should all be looking at. As an elected at. official, I'll have to do that before I can support it. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we've got to know that you've got to examine it. What is this proposal? It's one thing to put it on the ballot. It's another thing to actually vote for it once it's on the ballot. Right. And that's when you need to take a look at is this going to be a better system than what we have now? We have to look at what, what's happened over the last seven or eight years and what what might not happen if we were in a different structure. Sounds good. Yes, Can you give an example of some of the grants and dollars amounts that those example library systems are getting that have the independent tax? I, I can't, but I would think uh, Howard Coker and, and Dan Elvin and some of the people that have served on the Library Foundation Probably, mm -hmm. I mean, they'll probably tell you themselves why they won't give money, but they. Well, I understand because it's advantage. basically they assume that the city will just, if you get it, they'll take it away. So that it replaces city funding. And they're and actually, they're right to assume that. Right. Yeah. Yes, uh, so you're proposing that the library should pull out of all central services, including HR. Uh, you mentioned IT, public yeah. works, but including no, they should HR. Their, and well, they could contract for that with the city on their own terms. So they Some of the city hall, you know, doing other things. 
things. I think it's, those are, are going to be administration questions as to what would work best for us this year or the next year. I mean, I can see that you might want to contract for services with the city on a fair price. Where, you, where if you're not if you're not going to get a fair price, you might want to do something different. Okay, I have a follow up. Um, the, uh, because the whole purpose of consolidation was to be able to get economies of scale. And the counties that you're comparing them to, are they consolidated counties? Are they, do they have the central services? And I'm not no. saying that there isn't problems with no, central they're, services. They're no, they're not consolidated counties. Uh, but uh, for libraries, because of informa infor information technology and the way libraries deliver services today, it's a much different world uh, than uh, the library that my father came to in the 60s what we were right there, there. I mean, today we're delivering services of libraries in ways that were, I don't want to say were unimaginable because I saw something that my father, that someone sent me that my father wrote like in 1965 about the libraries in the future, what libraries would look like in 100 years. Right, well the sheriff's, off. and the sheriff's department does that, they have their internal IT person and they also use the, yeah. the centralized IT. Yeah, but they, you're, they you're like for IT. infrastructure yeah. purposes. But, but your, your library director, uh, your Barbara Gillis, comes from two systems, uh, both San Antonio and Houston. Uh, and I've chatted with her about this particular thing. And she said they in both in those instances they had their own they had their own systems. And she said she would and for certain portions I should advise against it. Because it doesn't to have to run your own HR payroll system and everything else is not advisable. You can get it, you can buy it cheaper from either the city government or outside. Okay. But there are certain different types of <coughs> library systems that do need internal support. And they need and you and actually what you do is you basically contract with vendors to do that. Because the people who are supplying that particular piece of system or software, they know how to run it and they know how to support it and they can take it. Just like major corporations don't you know they've got uh, copying machines all over the building. They don't own them, they don't know them, this type of thing. You know, if something goes wrong with that copy machine, call Charlie's, okay? Charlie doesn't work for us, but you know, Charlie is here because he's contracted and Charlie comes to take care of it. Okay. That was kind of my only other question is, it, on paper it looks good, I'm just a little concerned that it doesn't separate it far enough from the political because of the structure of the board itself. I'm a little bit concerned that we're still a little too bound to the politics. Um, I see the advantage, it's huge, and I get it, but it puts us kind of a, is there a board, 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 the board doesn't have any role in the millage or the money. They just have a role in, in the, I don't want to say day-to-day -day decisions, but the policy decisions, like issues coming up about computer use, uh, right. protection of minors, protection of, of uh, people, people are using libraries from people that maybe are using libraries for the wrong reasons. Uh, all sorts of, I can't, I mean, Guy probably sees the, the decisions that are made on a monthly basis at board meetings. You, you need to have a board. Right. And you got to have a process for appointing them. And that's the kind of uh, process where the mayor, you know, tries to find people like Sybil. And they, they were having problems finding some people to serve on the library board of trustees, but then they get vetted by the council to be sure somebody doesn't have, you know, something, some baggage to do with them. And then, <laughs> And I will tell you, when I was young, I met some of the finest civic leaders in Jacksonville because they were serving on the board of library trustees. And uh, we still today are attracting some of our best people throughout the county to serve on the board of library trustees, although you know, it's sometimes it's not pleasant. Because they get, they, get, they get accused of things that they shouldn't be accused of. Any question over here? Yeah, um, so are you saying that under the You have to work like in my business career. You know, I worked for different companies I didn't know I'd work for. You know, and like one day somebody came in and said, You're sold, you know, all 1,700 of us. And what you had to do with it is you, you know, our, our personnel policies and you just keep going. Okay. And, just, and that would have to be done in protecting 
employees is it Sarah? Because I would, I mean, like, that would be 21 years with the city that I would lose. Well, <laughs> no, no, you, that would, you, you know, that type of thing would be worked out so that you'd be protected so you would not start all over again. Uh, you know, as far as it kind of, uh, Whatever, whatever's happening in the city right now, I'm going to you know, one thing is certain, there are best rights in the pension plan that somebody's earned something, you can't take that away. And that's one of the things that um, is kind of like a given. So you can't <coughs> interfere with someone's contractual rights or someone's going to sue them. The uh, question of what do you need going forward? Obviously, we're not going to have a defined benefit plan anymore. What do the libraries do going forward? They have a pension plan and the piles of design. Is there going to be union contracts? Or will there be, you know, what's, what's going to happen there? I think 93% or more of the library employees today are union employees with that have contracts and there are things that the library administration can't do in connection with moving people around with hours of working or whatever the library is bound by. Is that a good way to do it forward in the future? I don't know. I mean, I, I, these are things down the weeds that we hope that they all work out in, in the most efficient, professional, effective way possible. Yes, sir. You said, you just told her that you worked for something all this time and can't be taken away. Um, in my conversations with some retired policemen, you know, that exact thing comes up. They're saying, now they're trying to take this away. Uh, we worked for this. <coughs> the city agreed to everything. This was a contract. The city failed to keep up their end. That's the policeman's point here. The city failed to keep up their end on, on, on that. So by creating an independent entity over here to run the libraries and everything, I'm not saying I'm for or against anything, but they could just, they could just raise their hand and say, hey, we just formed a union. Uh, we need a little bit better pension. Uh, yeah. And you know, it's just like a little can of worms, all based on the fact that we're going through that can of worms right now with you know, pension refund, pension refund, pension refund. And so creating a separate thing, you know, it's, we definitely have to do something to save the library. Well, well, I don't doubt about well, that. But, well, okay. you know, the, the deeper you dig into this thing, you know, the more questions arise. You know, that gentleman over there, he just, I couldn't believe he said, as an elected official, I need to step back and look into this, you know, and do due diligence. You know, I've been to so many city council meetings where I question whether anybody on the council actually you uh, know you know looked in did some research on you know what is going on with the voting on so i was shocked when i heard a bunch of officials say wait a minute i might need to look into this <laughs> 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 i'm going <laughs> i'm in jack's beach you know we just had had the thing going on with the apartment complex and parking issues you know it's like you know did anybody look into that so, some issues will always go on, but I do think, I know I heard reference to some of the League of Cities will be here at the next meeting. I know that there is a lot more careful attention being paid to things like pension plans. How do you do them? Do you do them at all? Um, and I don't know what the answers are going to be in the future. That's, that's uh, well of my uh, skill set. Yes, sir. With the integration of the IT, are you going to be integrating with the public school system on their libraries and stuff to interface with? So that the kids can. I'm not sure how that would work, but we, we now have a member uh, on the library board of trustees that comes from the school system before. We didn't have that connection, so now we have a representative from the school system sitting on the, on the board of library trustees. I don't think that's that's a, a um, uh, yeah. not a voting member, but it's a non voting member. But until we did a reform a couple of years ago, we didn't have that interaction. One of the things that I hear, and I haven't had time to really check into it, is that the school system has inactivated a lot of their media centers. That's what I've heard. And they basically closed their library system. So that is even more important that we get this public library system stronger until they can bring that back or whether they will bring it back. Are you going to be looking at other library systems around the country and what kind of uh, IT 
programs and things they're utilizing at the lowest cost? Yeah, that would be good. Okay. They, they probably, while we're having their staff, probably know that answer right now. Yeah. They've been working, they've been trying to deal with the IT issues for a long time, yeah. and it's been frustrating. It's getting better, but it's been very frustrating. And they need to look at the library system from some of the states that have the best education. Yeah. <laughs> We, we, we had, again, no, Texas. <laughs> Texas, no. the JCCI study we did, there was, again, we were having a consultant system all over the country that we were running into library systems that had experience of things that failed, things that worked. And the capacity plan does address that. I'm not quite sure which page of the 853 pages does, but there is some, there are some, some addressing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and that, that, see that gives, this plan, gives the professional staff the flexibility that they need in order to do that. That's the, right now, they're taught, and they're basically the type because their IT support comes 99% from, you know, from a centralized system. If they do buy, we do have systems which are supported by vendors, and they are. But you have limitations as to how that This will give that professional staff there, I, they look at me when I'm talking to them. They say there are better ways to do what we're doing, and they want to do it. How do you evaluate the value of having a parallel effort to have the consolidated taxing district as part of this consolidation review? Well, I think it would probably happen uh, anyway by whatever is going on in the board and boarders committee. They would probably look at this because they're, they're looking at it. Other issues too. I mean, I have not sat down with, with uh, Councilwoman Boyer or with uh, Council President uh, Delaford about the details of this, but I think that's something we will all be doing in the next three months is bringing them up to speed on how we got here and where we're going. And the same is very good point. I'm experiencing now too. People say, oh, the libraries are saved. Mission accomplished. We don't have to do anything anymore. Well, this effort started a long time ago because we were looking down the road and around the corner. So we're hopefully, hopefully our effort, and I, I also will guarantee you one thing, what Sybil's been doing at the beaches and Guy and I have been doing elsewhere and collecting petitions, that probably had more of an impact on saving branch libraries and restoring funding than anything else because the news media loved to they weren't in the civil driveway on the 4th of July. <laughs> Were they? No. <laughs> but, but they've been following this effort and they see that people really love libraries. People are angry about lost hours and the possibility that people that even people are talking about places like this. That had an Where can we go to get more signatures? So it's it's appalling to me that we only have essentially 19,000 who live in a community of over a million people. Well, here, here's something I've never done. All the times I've done this before yeah. has been with a large number of volunteers on election day who were collecting petitions at a polling place. For various reasons, it didn't work out last year. It should have worked out, but it didn't. So we were left with how do we collect petitions Otherwise, and I, I thought I mean, this is going to be really good part. But where we have been, libraries have been, I mean, obviously, with everyone who comes to this library will probably sign a petition. Uh, but there are other events coming up. I know we have uh, Arts Walk at the beach, yeah. beaches. Which have been very successful, and there'll be another one, and Susie yeah. always helps. And Susie just walks the neighborhood, I think, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's always the hot hard sign. Maybe we should be at a Jaguars game and give fans something else to do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> get them there at halftime as people leave. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing, that's right. We, we, hey, Bill, Sybil hangs out in ragtime right sometimes. <laughs> 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 some, 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 some of y'all met my, my assistant, former assistant, Adam Pardish. Oh, yeah. And he was at a karaoke. Uh, I mean, he was doing something at a karaoke yeah, night at a bar. Sorry. And he said, Petitions they collect at the bar. Once they may, uh, now some of those may be big thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, where we are, we have we a number of them at Graham downtown. That's across the ditch, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but at Graham, and the we've been there about eight about eight weeks now. 
So we are getting people who say, I've already signed. But it's interesting. First of all, I'm very interested in how many people from out of, out of the county are coming to Ramp. So Ramp is a driver, and there are people from Clay County, Nassau, Baker, and the like, and St. John's that are coming in. A lot of people. And they, we say we get a call kind of voter, and they say, well, we'll sign anyway. And we said yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but people say, I'll, you know, we're supporting. Yeah. Okay, so we, it's, it's, that's, that is very heartening that people are, they're aware of it. I mean, people in Ponte Vedra, I don't know whether they all sneak up here to go to this library or not. They do. <laughs> I Ponte see them Saturday. Maybe that's what we should do with St. John's County charges. We do. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe we ought to just ought to annex it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. okay, well, so we want to thank you guys for coming tonight. Yes. yes. brought these and these are at the beach wash more. tables but if you want to take some and like put them in different places but this is the very best uh, flyer and just um, just a reminder I mentioned that we need volunteers but you can also go and enjoy the event too and it's uh, Saturday October 12th from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. and uh, you can actually go to their website keeptheferry.org and they've got a list of all the bands that are going to be playing and it'll be a lot of fun it, we did it, we had a Beaches Watch table last year and we had a great time, so. You know where the park is? Where you park? There are two new lots that were not available last year. that are Port Authority property right there in the site. Okay. Okay. okay, and one other announcement I want to make. Um, the, the library staff did ask that as we leave tonight, if we could kind of like use our library voices because, <laughs> because a lot of times after we've packed everything up and we're headed out the door, there's a lot of noise and ruckus. And so um, I would like to ask that you uh, think about that. And if you are, if you are chatting, just kind of like whisper because um, because they they would they would like for us to be a little bit quieter so just want to ask ask you to think about that and then we hope we'll see you on Wednesday November 6th and if you do have some time from from 3 to 5 on uh, Saturday October 12th and would like to hang out in the beaches watch booth we'd love to have you and there's a sign up sheet at our table here so thank you guys very much have a great night <laughs>